So on this side, it's minus omega 0 plus omega 1, and the same story. Yes? Should that be a negative? Okay, sorry, yes, that should be negative. So we should really draw this downward because there's a negative sign here. So let me just put a negative sign here so that you guys remember this impulse should be pointing downward, right? So there is a negative a k b c o over omega one k one one over four. Okay. The last component we have to worry about is this one: cosine of omega zero minus omega one. So what is that? Well. That's a cosine, and its frequency happens to be omega 0 minus omega 1. So that would be another one that up over here at omega 0 minus omega 1. Another one over here at minus omega 0 minus omega 1. And it has the same amplitude as the other one, right? Because they both multiply by the same factor. All right. So that is what we get after we perform narrow band frequency modulation. There are two assumptions here, not to be forgotten. Number one, the baseline signal is a simple sinusoid, right? It's not a square wave, it's not a random signal. Number two, this condition has to hold. This is uh, meaning that A1, this one is chosen small enough, or this one is large enough, or some combination, that overall this is much less than one ring. Under these two conditions, we end up with these nice and simple spectra here. You can, we will call these two FM sidebands. So we see that the spectrum consists of the carrier itself plus two sidebands. These two sidebands are symmetrically located around the carrier. Right? Omega 1 above, omega 1 below. And they have the same amplitude. All right. Any questions so far? Okay. Now, in homework number two, you will take this one step further. You will have the same situation, except that this condition doesn't hold. Okay? So we're not assuming much less than one radian, we're assuming it's somewhat small. So what you will do is, instead of writing cosine of epsilon as one, you'll expand it for the, first, for the next Taylor series term. Similarly here, for the next Taylor series term. That allows you a much better approximation. So even if this is as high as 1, that's a pretty good approximation. And then you carry out more calculations, and suddenly you see that in addition to these two guys, there's more stuff. There are more impulses out here. And that should be uh, a good representation of what you saw in lab number 2. Remember you had VCO number 1 applied to VCO number 2, and the applicant of VCO number 2 had lots of stuff around it. So that's what you will see in work number two. Okay, that's all I have to say today in regard to FM. In this lab today, we pass out these variables here. In the lab today, uh, uh, what we would like to do is the following. Uh, your laptops, which you get from Bond, have some music loaded on them, okay? So you have music. Here's your music. You're applying this to a VCO, the 100 megahertz VCO. <coughs> so you perform frequency modulation on the VCO. Then uh, you will uh, connect this to an antenna. It propagates. You think this would be more like 90 megahertz. We'll talk about that later. And then we have a radio. Uh, let me show you this radio here. Uh, this radio here, this, this. That's a simple different radio. So you pro you transmit your music wirelessly, and it will pick it up by that radio. And if you tune your radio to the right frequency, you'll be able to receive that music. The musics on your laptops are different, so you, the different groups won't be confused with each other. So you will listen to your own music, okay? 
Now, uh, how do we make sure that the seven groups that are present today will not interfere with each other? So what I have said in the lab assignment is that the, the frequency you choose here, the carrier frequency you choose here, is equal to 90 plus your group number, megahertz. <coughs> so group number one will choose the carrier frequency of 91 megahertz. Group number two, 92 megahertz, and so on. So you are one megahertz apart, and hopefully that's enough not to confuse with one another. The standard broadcast FM radio has a spacing of 200 kilohertz. So this is more than that. Hopefully it's good enough not to interfere with each other. So that's, that's the basic idea. Uh, and then in these measurements, you will also look at the spectrum of the signal here while it's being modulated by music. See what it looks like. You play with the amplitude of this. You make it larger and smaller. You look at the spectrum here and see what it looks like. It's not a simple vertical expansion or, or contraction because it's a nonlinear function, right? We, in FM, we are taking the cosine of the baseband signal. So if the baseband signal amplitude goes up and down, lots of things happen here. And that's the objective of uh, some of these observations. You will design a loop antenna, something like this, based on the equation I have given you in the, in the last time. And use that antenna to connect to the output of the receiver to transmit. OK, that antenna is designed for about 100 megahertz. And that tells you what uh, diameter you need for this loop to make it a reasonable antenna. You remember, the antenna has to radiate, not store, right? And you design that antenna on it after VCO, and then you can measure all these things. Any questions today? All right, let's get started.